Greetings everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. This is episode 2 of the Tunkwa Conservation Park and today I'm very excited because uh, we have an amphibian house to build. Yes, that's the plan for today. We are going to be building a giant amphibian center at the top of this little ridge in the hill that we have uh, outside of the plaza that we constructed at the end of our last episode. Um, we are going to be doing some exhibits uh, on the left and right uh, of that plaza. Uh, but those will come in episode 3 and 4. I decided that uh, it would be nice to have um, sort of a very big featured building uh, to frame the end of this plaza. So that is what we're going to create. Uh, using a little bit of a, a trick there, uh, I think that it was the water pump to create ourselves a little bit of a, a smaller bit of set of stairs there to take us up that slight rise. I didn't want it to be uh, too high. Um, we're going to put a bit of a uh, sort of a deck out the front of this building. now. One of the big concerns for me on this build uh, was the grid. Um, I was very keen to get the grid uh, working correctly. Um, and the goal was uh, really to build uh, a bit of a, a uh, I don't know, a bit of an asymmetrical um, sort of building. Um, the idea with the center being a sort of uh, very much open a greenhouse uh, sort of um, plaza type uh, area, uh, covered roof, uh, absolutely, um, and in there I'm going to be placing a bunch of uh, exhibits. Um, those exhibits uh, uh, will include uh, the golden poison frog, the red-eyed tree frog, and the goliath frog. Um, I know that only one of those, the goliath frog, is uh, from the African continent. I believe that the golden poison frog and the red-eyed tree frog are uh, from South America, I think. Um, but it's always nice to have frogs in parks and when it comes to things like amphibians and reptiles um, and some of the uh, animals that exist in the uh, sort of um, exhibit habitats, I feel that uh, regardless of biome, um, it's okay to have them um, in the park. You normally do find them in zoos uh, anyway. Um, those are very controlled um, environments. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can normally find them and I thought that it would be a, a good thing to have at the top of this hill. So um, as I said, this grid was really important um, to me, uh, getting it right. This building looks really big and square at the moment, but I'm, I'm sure you'll get a better idea of what I have uh, planned uh, for it in the future. Uh, there you go, I'm putting out a sort of three big archway doors on that side of the world. Um, and I'm now uh, mapping out what would be the inside of that uh, sort of... Uh, exhibit area that I was talking about, the amphibian area. Now on the left and right you will see me placing uh, star paths. Um, the idea is, is that uh, I'm going to use the space and you can see me kind of uh, blocking it in and sectioning in that central area there. The left and the right I wanted to uh, use uh, to house a bunch of staff buildings. Um, so I think you see me putting down, um, I think that's a staff room um, and um, a training center. And I think I put in a couple of other things. I think there's a, a workshop and a couple of other items that go in here too. Um, and the idea is to kind of uh, use those areas on the side to house our first sort of uh, staff facilities. Um, I do go into quite a bit of effort here to make it actually look good. Um, I do realize that uh, the staff uh, in the game are also affected by the looks of their surroundings. Um, so I'm attempting to really make this uh, look uh, great for the staff as well. Um, I don't know how much effort I should actually be putting into that, uh, but uh, there you go, I did. Um, the grid here started to screw with me a bit because I realized that I place, in placing these staff buildings uh, not on the grid, um, I was creating myself some issues um, in terms of trying to get the, the walls and buildings all looking good, but I think I kind of, I kind of eventually uh, managed to, 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 get it, to get it correct um, in the end. So um, while we uh, watch me uh, battling to make these staff areas uh, look good, one of the things that I wanted to do uh, in this series was actually talk a little bit more about the animals that end up going into um, the various exhibits and uh, habitats that we end up building. Um, I find that aspect of the game, I think I've mentioned this in the first episode, um, a particularly uh, alluring part of the game. And I really appreciate the level of detail um, that the developers uh, have put into um, yeah, giving giving this as much realism as can be expected. 
So, yeah, without uh, further ado, I think I've already mentioned uh, we're going to be including three frogs in this exhibit. Uh, the first is the, the, the golden poison frog. Um, so, yeah, I think the golden poison frog, it's otherwise known, I think, as a poison dart frog. Um, and I think it's endemic uh, to the rainforests of uh, Colombia, if I'm correct. Um, I believe uh, along that Pacific coast of Colombia. Um, and I think that I think one of the big mis biggest misnomers about the uh, golden poison frog is that although they're called golden frogs, um, I believe that they're actually sort of uh, more of a, a mint green, yellow, and orange sort of colors uh, rather than gold. Uh, so yeah, interesting color variations that I think you get in those in those particular types of frogs. They're also really really small. Um, I think that they are yeah about two inches fully grown, so tiny little frogs. Um, and they have extremely, extremely poisonous skin. Um, you don't want to go and be near and touching them. Um, they are going to cause you um, some trouble. Um, uh, some other facts about the golden uh, poison frog. I think they live on the forest floor. Um, so not much climbing happening there. I think all that damp, uh, damp uh, sort of underbrush and, and leaves that fall down onto the forest is where they like to make their home. And as a result, I don't think they actually require water uh, to live. Uh, they do require to uh, lay their tadpoles, uh, for the tadpoles to survive, their eggs, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think that they uh, do need bodies of water to survive. I think the dampness of the forest floor is, is, is good enough. Um, I also believe they're very social animals. I think they live in groups of sort of four, four plus, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, so we will, when we place uh, the golden poison frogs uh, in this uh, exhibit, uh, eventually we will be uh, placing a, a nice little uh, family group of them. So before we go on and talk about the red-eyed tree frog, which is the next one, let's just get back to uh, the time lapse, the time lapse that's going on here. So um, you can see uh, you can see me uh, kind of uh, battling out here with trying to get uh, the uh, the side areas of this uh, uh, sort of staff area looking good. I think out the windows, I, the reason why I'm putting exhibit stuff in those windows there, I know it's, it's kind of hidden from everything, but I believe that the staff can see through those windows and, and I'd like, uh, yeah, when we kind of cruise into those rooms, which I'm sure we will do throughout the game, um, that it looks good. Um, I always think that, that making everywhere look nice is, is, is a good plan. Um, I think I did end up spending an absolutely inordinate amount of time on the staff areas. Um, something that I learned from, I, I don't know if I will be doing much more of the staff areas in the future like this. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a, it was a nice learning curve. Um, it really was. We've got some lights in there as well, I think, um, to make sure that uh, it's not all dark um, in these staff rooms. All right. So while I continue battling on with uh, getting all of that correct over there, um, I think the other side, it was the side that was particularly difficult. Um, I think the, uh, the left-hand side of the building um, was a bit more of a, uh, it was a bit easier to, to place. Um, like you can see me putting some nice decorations along here, along the walls, making that sort of staff area look good. Um, yeah, I think those lights down, it looks good. So let's talk about uh, the red-eyed tree frog, uh, which is the next uh, sort of uh, frog that we're gonna be putting into one of the exhibits in this amphibian house. Um, again, I think it's another South American frog. Uh, I think it's a tropical, definitely a tropical rainforest frog, another one. Um, I think that they are very interesting frogs because I think that they are, I think if I remember correctly, the female frogs are slightly larger than the male frogs. Um, but I think they both look the same. They've got the same similar markings, which are those sort of red eyes, uh, vivid red eyes around, uh, around their sort of big red eyes on their face and sort of really dark, uh, pupils and, and the upper body and legs of the frog are very pale green. Um, but then the you get the, the the you get those striking blue markings on them as well. Uh, there's like those bright blue sides, um, um, and I think it also has orange uh, orange feet if I remember correctly. Um, it's a, it's an incredibly well camouflaged frog frog if I remember correctly. Very hard spot, um, and I think that they're hard spot in the game as well. And, and again. Um, not uh, unlike the golden poison frog, the the, the red eye frog are solitary animals, um, so uh, not very big, uh, not very big uh, family um, populations there. So here you go. Here you are seeing me finally uh, putting in the exhibits. So those will be the three exhibits for the frogs: the golden tree frog, uh, the red eyed tree frog, uh, well, the golden poison frog, the red eyed tree frog, and the Goliath frog. The Goliath frog being the only frog from from Africa. 
Um, now you would have noticed that on the sides, and this is a very cool addition to this uh, amphibian house uh, that I would have uh, that I've designed, is that um, over where those staff areas are, um, I have placed uh, some. Um, stairs that go up to what will eventually be viewing decks uh, and the idea is that those viewing decks um, will have exhibits on the left and right hand side of this uh, amphibian house so people can kind of go into the amphibian house check out the frogs um, and then on the left and right uh, head up those stairs um, and once up on those stairs these decks that you're seeing um, adding to these little decorations and then underneath of these sort of architectural finishes these decks um, are going to um, yeah, give the guests a good view uh, of uh, hopefully uh, some larger larger animals, maybe even some uh, primates. I'm not quite sure what we're going to put there yet, but uh, definitely uh, it's going to be uh, a key feature of this amphibian house. So multifunctional, not only to house the frogs, but uh, using the structure um, to give myself some space uh, to yeah, uh, provide some more interesting flow to the zoo. Um, yeah, I thought that would be thought that would be interesting. Come down, check out some frogs, head up the stairs, and and have a look at some other animals. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier with this grid, um, and I didn't get it completely correct. Um, I battled with the the corner edges here a little bit. Um, in the end, it ended up looking all right, uh, but uh, you know, not not entirely happy with it. Uh, but it it got there in the end. Um, I wasn't displeased um, with the end result. Um, and at the end of this time lapse, uh, and after me rambling on here, we will uh, be going through a, a sort of a, a, a non-time lapse walkthrough, and we can take a closer look at what uh, what we've done there. So you would have seen me grabbing a whole bunch of pre-made rock formations uh, that I have camped out on the side there. Um, I did that so that uh, I would not have to spend too much time playing with rocks. Um, yeah, very very useful little trick that having a whole bunch of having a whole bunch of them sitting out on the side so that I can just copy through and, and use them. I wanted some foliage um, inside this uh, area too. Um, I'm going to put a big glass roof on it and it kind of felt that uh, I kind of felt that putting some foliage in it kind of added to that uh, sort of greenhouse feel. Um, and as uh, two of these frogs come from a, a sort of a tropical habitat, um, I felt that the foliage inside um, would be nice. Um, I also wanted to kind of uh, keep the rock work, the African rock work going as well, to keep that theme um, even though those frogs are from South America, um, I thought that it was key to kind of, you know, try and keep the theme there. So a little bit of foliage work going on inside of the uh, of the, the amphibian house here, a big glass roof going on soon. But uh, while that continues, uh, let's talk about the third frog that we're going to be uh, having in this uh, good old amphibian house here. And that is the Goliath frog. And as I mentioned, it's the only frog that actually comes from the African continent. Again, a tropical frog. Uh, it comes from, I think, uh, sort of Central Africa. The African rainforests around Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, um, Congo, around that area of the world, um, and it's a very large frog, um, if I if I remember correctly. I think that uh, the females are definitely the larger of the two um, between the males and the females, and I think that the females can get up sort of three kilograms in weight, which is a really hefty frog, um, and between 17 and 30 centimeters long, and it's a sizable, sizable, sizable amphibian. That um, they are very. Um, uh, I think they live um, near fast flowing rivers, which is actually a really interesting thing for a frog. Uh, frogs, as far as I understood, normally like sort of more standing bodies of water, so the fast flowing rivers fact is uh, very interesting. Um, and I do know as well that uh, in terms of the colouring, they're sort of a dark brown, paler underbelly, and sort of, uh, yeah, normal frog looking, I suppose. Um, I think that also a very sad thing about the Goliath frog is because they're so large, um, I think that they are actually a very endangered species. I think they get uh, hunted for food, um, being almost three kilograms big. I'm sure if you're if you're hungry and a, a three kilogram frog ain't bad. Um, and I also think uh, as pets as well, they end up being, being traded as pets. So there's all that sort of endangered wildlife trade. Uh, it is a bit of a pity that it happens, but uh, it does. Um, and uh, we just need to be aware of it, and I, and I like how this game, as I said, brings us, uh, brings awareness to that kind of thing. So, here you can see on the time lapse, just getting back to what we're doing here, is, uh, yeah, we placed those exhibits out and got all the foliage in, and uh, what I'm doing now is I am, um, yeah, placing a bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of a 
foliage, I think, on top of those exhibits to kind of really bring that foliage in and out. Um, I found some mulch here. I thought the mulch looked good at the top of those. Um, and then, yeah, more of those tropical kind of ferns. I think we got some some big um, uh, sort of, I don't know what those are called. Those are sort of elephant's ears, plants, and then there's some... Um, uh, oh, I haven't even got what any of those are called. It's completely slipped my mind now. That's ridiculous. Uh, those, those, they're, they're anyway, jungle, jungle plants. Let's just put it like that. The, the name will come back to me uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. So getting that foliage out the top, I thought, uh, really kind of added a lot uh, and brought brought things in a bit. Um, really kind of made it, uh, yeah, what it what it should be and kind of sig signaled that the, the 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 animals in these exhibits uh, come from the jungle. There's definitely a tropical feel across those exhibits and uh, trying to bring that through what's inside. Um, we also, I also went into quite a lot of effort here to really frame these exhibits in. Um, I didn't want them to look um, sort of like they were just sort of plonked in there. So uh, I think I put some, uh, yeah, these poles in here kind of bringing that architectural design and style uh, from elsewhere in the game um, through uh, to the exhibits, those little African poles and those themings. These are some, uh, yeah, some lights to shine up onto onto the exhibits, give everything a, give everything a good glow, um, as you will. And uh, I think we also ended up uh, slamming down quite a lot of educational um, uh, items as well, um, speakers and uh, little uh, placards, uh, little information placards. Uh, yeah, there you go, there you go, the information. There comes the information in um, for all the various uh, animals. Right, uh, so that's done. Um, now what we were doing up here was, uh, yeah, uh, continuing with the roof design, which I was, uh, yeah, not sure about to begin with. Um, I had a couple of ideas about how it was gonna work, um, but um, uh, it ended up actually working quite well. So. As I said, these areas out on the side, I wanted them to be uh, very much focused on being viewing decks. Um, so I wanted to keep them semi-open, um, if that makes sense. And I wanted to bring through that thatch, uh, the thatch roof of, of, um, of the sort of lower buildings from that plaza area out. So um, you can see they're uh, really framing it out to be a, a sort of, yeah, just a shaded area. Um, across there, they're going to leave the, the middle open. I think we'll be doing a lot more work on that uh, later on. Um, but yeah, just copying it out to either side. Uh, nice, just mirror architectural style there. Um, and on top of it now, we're going to go with a whole bunch of glass. Um, I think uh, I played with a couple of heights uh, here of, of this glass roof um, and a couple of different sort of like angled styles. I think we ended up going with kind of that sort of a wing style. I thought it looked kind of cool. Bought that, bought that apex of the amphibian house uh, really high up, um, and sort of gives it a, a sort of nice imposing structure. Um, it really brings th through that uh, glass greenhouse type feel, um, while still retaining that uh, African architectural style elements in it. And we're going to run a bunch of poles uh, and things along there um, later to make it fit in. Um, and I'm carrying that wood theme um, through um, here as well, um, really just blocking off. So just the roof there in glass, I um, wanted to try and keep as much wood as possible um, in, into, the, into the design. Um, so there you go, um, filling it all along. I think we put glass along the bottom there as well, just so it's not all wood. Um, so here are our supporting uh, beams and structures that are going to go into there. So here's the glass, yeah, we're going to put the... We're going to put the glass in there. Yeah, there you go. So that rings off with glass. So it's not all wood, but uh, a nice big glass sort of uh, structure, uh, all in all. Um, right, so that copies across to the other side. Um, yep, good. There you go. And uh, yeah, I'm getting better at using these building tools, I must say. Um, so yeah, all the glass goes in and uh, it's all looking great. All right. Um, I think now what I'm going to do in a few minutes time is spend a bit of time doing some detailing on the roof, straightening it out. That grid didn't quite work for me, um, but I think we ended up getting it uh, correct in the end. Um, we did end up putting a lot of uh, poles along those uh, walls. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So copying out a lot of those to kind of line the edge and, and, and really make it look like this glass uh, structure is really attached uh, to the building here. Um, I like how those viewing decks uh, are open as well to that inside glass structure. It's almost like uh, everyone uh, can also, as well as looking down into the habitats on the left and right of this uh, 
and for me and house we'll also be able to look down into the lower area where, where all the the frog exhibits are as well it's gonna look really cool um all right uh getting stuck into my lettering again here yeah, it's always it's always good to to kind of kind of have some some letterings here so here we go amphibian house uh yeah or rept i think i started with reptile house and then i decided to go for an amphibian house i thought uh, reptile was just a too broader term um and not quite accurate for the fact that we actually had frogs in there so frogs are amphibians so we're gonna go for amphibian house rather than frog house frog house just just felt a little bit too too basic um for me um yeah so there's the the frog house going in and or amphibian house i'm calling it a frog house now um yeah and a little bit more detailing i think i just copied across a couple of these poles a little bit more um like i said i wanted to make it look like this uh, was a really uh part of the architecture and uh, that roof fitted in nicely um, and uh, yeah it all worked um I, I think yeah a little bit more detailing on the roof um etc which is just lovely and I think this all came out uh, really well in the end. Um, we're gonna do, I did some detailing, some foliage work around out the front as well, um, just to sort of, uh, you know, start the, the outside work here, and make it look make it look like this all leading up to the singular place. I think there's a little bit more work to be done on this sort of like uh, deck entrance area, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, I kind of just started it off to give the idea of what I, what I wanted to create. Um, yeah, so that's about all I have to say for for this episode, uh, rambling on a bit. Um, as I mentioned at the end of this uh, time lapse, uh, we will go into a uh, real-time walkthrough and I'll show you um, a little bit more in detail about what I built and explained uh, the thinking behind uh, what I've created here. So please stick around for that. Um, it will be up in a few minutes. Otherwise, um, if you have enjoyed this, um, as always, uh, please hit that like button. Um, and I'll see you in a few minutes uh, for the walkthrough. Greetings everyone and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little speed build uh, time lapse there and my ramblings. Uh, it's time for a little bit of a, a walkthrough of what we uh, have built in this episode. And I've intentionally started uh, out here at the uh, beginning of the park because this is kind of how I intended that building being at the end of this big long walkway as you can see as people are coming in streaming in behind me and sort of walking up. Um, Sort of uh, underneath this uh, great big uh, arch. Uh, there you go, Tanko Conservation Park, as it, as it welcomes you. So let's let's shoot forward. So here we, we've shown all of this on the either side, so we're not going to get into it. But yeah, as I said, as you come through here, 
it sort of like opens up and there you go there's this big amphibia, amphibian house over here and it kind of rears its head and really attracts you towards it if that makes sense um, there are paths that are going to go off here to the left uh, and to the right um, as I mentioned I am going to build uh, exhibits behind the buildings here and behind here and I think the exhibits will probably reach out over here and reach out over here and then another exhibit on this side and on this side and that's what these are these are viewing platforms uh, and i'll show you how they kind of work just now so let's shoot forward quickly and actually here, go up the stairs um so yeah there it is amphibian house that that lovely uh sort of mix of the wood and glass uh, i kind of think that it's kind of bringing that uh, style uh, through uh, that sort of architectural style from from back there and mirroring it through to what we've got going over here um, I love these sign boards over here. Um, I'm really a big fan of them uh, and I'm kind of keen to put the names of animals on them very soon. I've got I've got plans for them. Um, I've got some education boards out on either side here. I think I still need to put some things around here like bins and benches. Uh, they kind of feel like good things to add to this little area. A little bit of foliage decoration on each side and I haven't completed the path in for the staff rooms which are obviously um, on either side of this which I'll show you just now. But uh, we go into um, into the, the this grand big atrium here, and I love this design. That nod to the African heritage, that that thatch running up the middle, but largely a glass big dome uh, with our exhibits here. So here I think we have the uh, what is this? The golden uh, poison frog. Uh, we have the Goliath frog over here, um, and we have the red-eyed tree frog uh, in this one. So this is definitely our frog exhibit. And then as I said, there's these stairs that go up onto the uh, left here um, and onto the right. And I'll also put uh, probably animal names on those boards there. And the idea is the people come there, have a look at the frogs, but then also wander up the stairs. Ooh, let's uh, make sure the camera works. Wander up the stairs here um, into this sort of big opening viewing area, which I will definitely do some more decoration on. You can also look down into this sort of atrium here. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, and then they can wander over to this side and then there will be exhibits for them to look down. This will be a cool viewing platform for some, for some larger animals. And then obviously looking out over this way, um, they'll be able to look out onto the rest of the park. So yeah, that's kind of what we've, uh, kind of the intention of those on either side. Um, then I also want to show you the work we did uh, here on either side of the, um, on either side of this uh, big amphibian house for the staff. So this entrance, this will eventually be linked up to the path thing down there so the staff can get into it. But essentially, here we go, we go into the staff room. I've got some notes here, fire safety training next week. It's a bit of decoration in here to make it look good, but largely lights. And we've got a, uh, what's this, a, uh, that's a marker, trade market center, I think, uh, marketplace. Uh, latest park edition of Warthog, just some signs here. And I think this is the staff room. There's the window through into the staff room over there. Um, yep, so that's this side, uh, so little staff, staff buildings over there, let's uh, fly over to this end of the world and show you what we got here. This end is far more practical and functional, just a, sort of a long corridor, I think this is a uh, workshop, um, uh, there's another animal training center, and I think this is, oh there's the workshop, I think that might be the research station, I'm not quite familiar yet with these signs, but uh, there you go, and we've got some nice decorations on the walls to make this kind of look cool. Um, so yeah. That is uh, essentially uh, the Tonkwa Conservation Park's Amphibian House. I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, towering up here above everything as you walk up the path. Uh, fantastic stuff. Um, yeah, as always, I really hope that you've uh, enjoyed this episode. Um, I certainly have. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, in the next one, getting stuck into, uh, yeah, building uh, what I think will be... Uh, the first exhibit. Um, I'm not quite sure what animal it is yet, probably a spotted hyena, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, you joining me for that, and uh, yeah, let me know if you've got any other animals you would like me to look at to adding to this park uh, sooner rather than later. Until then, I am the bird. Stay safe. Signing out.